Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to install one of these onto one of these. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, in today's video, I'm going to show you something very simple, uh, very easy to do, but still something that some people still have difficulties with or are a little bit frightened to do so. So, hopefully, I'm going to allay those fears today and I'm going to show you how to do it and it's very, very simple to do. So if you're planning on building your own PC, but you're a little bit unsure, and actually attaching the processor to the motherboard is one of those things which really does scare you, then uh, let's get into it and I'll show you how simple it can be. So first of all, obviously make sure that your processor is compatible with your motherboard. This processor is an AM4 processor, and this is a AM4 motherboard. Uh, for full list of compatibility and things like that, feel free to join us on our Discord chat, we can help you out there or go to the motherboard manufacturer's websites and look at their hardware compatibility charts. So first of all, let's take the processor out and get that ready. So this is an AM4 processor, as we said, and this particular version, the Ryzen 5 1400, comes with its own cooling fan included, which is quite a common practice these days. Uh, you may find yours already has thermal compound on. This one's been used previously, been cleaned up, so it hasn't got any, so we'll be showing you how to apply your thermal compound also. So make sure the fan's okay, make sure it spins freely and all that kind of stuff, and that bit is ready to go. The next part is your CPU itself. So like I said, this is the Ryzen 5 1400, and these are generally come packaged in a plastic clamshell to keep them free from any damage or anything. Uh, one thing to check if you're buying this as a used part is to make sure that all the pins on the bottom of the processor are completely straight and present. Uh, if you buy one with bent pins or pins which are missing, that is generally a bad thing and you should seriously consider returning it. Unless you've got a spectacular bargain and it's just a slightly bent pin, in which case you can probably straighten it out yourself, but that's something for another video. So with our processor and cooling fan ready, the next thing to do is to get the motherboard ready. Now ideally you want to do this in a static free environment or use one of those static straps to keep yourself earthed. Or alternatively you can actually use the cardboard of the motherboard box as a custom workbench and also a static free environment. So if we remove all the accessories from the motherboard and we can put our motherboard on the anti-static surface. So on the motherboard, first thing to do is to release the retention arm from the AM4 socket and put it in the upright position. So hopefully you can see that. So that's with the arm fully in the upright position. And what this does is, this is known as a zero insertion force method. So when you actually lower the arm, the top plate moves across and actually squeezes onto the pins of the processor. So with the arm in the down position, you wouldn't be able to put the processor in and you may actually cause damage to the processor pins trying to do so. So make sure the arm is in the fully upright position. Now if you take close attention to the motherboard itself, actually in the corner, you'll see there's a small indentation with an arrow marked on it. Now this is to align with the arrow which is also on the CPU itself. So if we take our processor carefully from the packaging and in the bottom corner, you'll notice there is a small triangle or arrow. So this is to be lined up with the section on the motherboard. Now if you, if you actually look at the bottom of the CPU, you also see that reflected again and also there are some pins actually missing in this area, whereas the pins in the other corners are all fully populated. So again, this gives you an idea of which way around the CPU will go. So now what we need to do is to align the arrow with the arrow and then gently put the processor on top of the motherboard. And you should find that the processor falls completely flat to the actual housing. And if you look at the sides, you should see that it is completely flush all the way around. Now, if for some reason you find that your processor hasn't gone in fully, then you can always pull it back out and let it settle in again. Sometimes possibly a small wiggle on the top might be helpful, but this is normally indicative of a pin being bent or something. So ideally you want to remove the processor and check for the bent pins again. So once you're happy that the processor is completely flush and flat within the motherboard, then you can take the retention arm and lower it and put it into the clasp to hold it into position. Possibly you'll hear a little click just to know that it's actually located properly. So with that part of it done, we've got our processor firmly attached. So now what we need to do is to apply our cooling solution. And in this particular instance, we're gonna be using the stock AMD cooler, but the process is relatively similar for pretty much all coolers. Some of the AM4 coolers do actually require these 
mounting clips to be left in place, some coolers require them to be removed. This particular cooler from AMD actually requires these to be removed. So we're gonna to need to use a cross-headed Phillips screwdriver and remove the retention brackets. So remove all four screws. And once you've removed the screws, the plastic brackets should just pop off and put these somewhere safe, ideally back in the motherboard box when you're finished. If you need to either return the motherboard or you actually want to choose a different cooler. So the next thing to do is to apply some thermal compound. Now everyone's got their own personal preferences on how to do this. I'm just gonna go with the P method for today's video. Uh, again, feel free to trial any particular methods you wish. As long as you've got sufficient cooling compound on there, you shouldn't go too far wrong. Too much is a bad idea and too little is a bad idea. And this will often be reflected in the temperatures that are reported by your motherboard. So for this instance, we're gonna be using the Arctic Cooling MX4 compound, which is generally known to be very good value for money and also has some very good temperatures. So all we're gonna do is put a small blob in the middle of the CPU. And I would say roughly the size of a small piece of rice is more than adequate. Under the compression of the cooler, this thermal compound will spread itself out. Now, if you wanted to at this point, you can, if you want to spread the compound out yourself. Again, there's so many different methods. There's not really a wrong or right way of doing this. Just do whatever works for you. So next thing to do is to apply our cooler to the motherboard. Now, what you want to try and do is to route it so that the cable for the CPU cooler is actually somewhere near where your CPU fan header is on the motherboard. Now on this particular board, the header is in this top corner near the RAM slots. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in straight away. This is a four pin connector, straight onto the four pin connector. So for cable management wise, you could probably route it down the side there if you wanted to, or alternatively, you could do it around that way. On this particular instance, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. Um, you don't wanna have it I, too stretched if at all possible. And in this particular mountain area, we couldn't really do it any other way anyway. So we'll go ahead now and stick this down. The one thing that is a little bit of an annoyance on this is the AMD logo on the cooler. Ideally, you'd want it in the top position for aesthetic purposes. Um, you can actually remove this upper ring and twist it around 90 degrees, which uh, isn't a bad idea if you want to do that, but you do find it slightly difficult to access the screws. So we won't be doing that on this particular video. So the next thing to do is to line up the screws with the bracket on the bottom or the mounting holes. And if you can see one, and then you can line up with the others quite easily. So just make sure that the screws are relatively close to the actual bottom area. And then all you do is with your cross-headed screwdriver, go around in a cross method. So one, two, three, four, or whichever way you choose to do it and just tighten them up slightly and keep on going around so you apply even pressure across the CPU's core or heat spreader. Now these are quite highly sprung so you may find a little bit of resistance when you're doing it. So you may need to apply a little bit of pressure. Sometimes if you're on a cardboard box, you may find you don't get quite enough pressure and it's quite difficult to get the screws in, but do persevere and wait until the, the screws start threading and you should be fine. So I'm gonna try this one now on this side. So that one's locked into place. So we've done this one in here in the rear, then one in the front. So now we're gonna do one of the other two just to even out the pressure. So just a few turns of the screwdriver just to get the thread started. Again, you may need to apply a little bit of pressure. So now we've got all four screws which are completely uh, latched in place. So now what we need to do is just tighten them up completely. Now if you do find when you're doing this that the screws just won't thread for some reason, what you can try doing is actually, with a little bit of pressure, just rotate the screwdriver anti-clockwise as if you're undoing and wait until you hear or feel a little click that is normally where the threads are aligning and then you can try and turn it clockwise to turn it back up or to tighten it back up rather. So we're just gonna do two screws on each side now just to get this fully tightened. Now with this particular cooler, 
there is a, a like a stop so you can't over tighten it and this one now is actually stopped so let's go ahead and do this one and that one's stopped that one's stopped and that one's stopped so that is all four of our cpu cooler screws firmly tightened into the stop position we've got our fan header connected and we're now ready to go ahead and install other components on the motherboard such as your ram modules nvme or m.2 drives and any other accessories ideally you want to try and do as much of this as possible before you put it into the chassis and another good practice is to actually put this on a bench connect up your power supply and just do a quick boot just to make sure that everything works before you install it hopefully this video has been useful for you if you're a little bit nervous about installing your am4 processor or any processor on your motherboard for that matter um, if you've got any comments or questions feel free to put them in the comments section below but in the meantime i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next build video thanks for watching